I am Dr. Sabnayan, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication, Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology, Kaknad. I will be handling the last part of fourth module from antenna and wave propagation for S6 students. And the topics covered are parabolic dish antenna and cassegrain antenna. Reflector antennas have been in use since the discovery of electromagnetic waves. They are used in radio astronomy, satellite tracking, deep space communication, etc. Some of the most popular reflector antennas are plane reflector, corner reflector, parabolic reflector, etc. Figure A shows a plane reflector which is the simplest. It is used to direct energy in a desired direction. As the figure shows, we have the source or feed placed and the reflector helps in directing energy towards the right hand side direction. Figure B shows a corner reflector with two plane reflectors intersecting at an angle less than 180 degree. We see that a sharper radiation than that obtained from a plane radiator can be obtained. This arrangement is called an active corner reflector because we have the source or feed placed. A corner reflector without an exciting antenna can be used as a passive reflector. Figure shows a parabolic reflector which is a highly directional antenna. The feed of source is kept at the focal point and the position of vertex is also shown in the figure. The parabola reflects the waves originating from the source which is kept at the focal point into a parallel beam thus transforming a curved wavefront from the source into a plane wavefront. The operation can be in transmitting or receiving mode. Thus, if a point source is placed at the focus, the rays reflected by the parabola will emerge as a parallel beam. Similarly, if a beam of parallel rays is incident upon the parabola, then the radiation will converge at the focal point. The parabola with its vertex, focus and axis marked is shown in the figure. The distance from any point P on the parabola to the focus is equal to the perpendicular distance of the point P to a fixed line called the directrix. Therefore, PF is equal to PQ as shown in the figure. Let A A dash be a line normal to the axis at an arbitrary distance QS from the directrix. Since P S is equal to Q S minus P Q and P F is equal to P Q. We can say that the distance from focus to the point S is P F plus P S which is ultimately equal to Q S. Thus, a property of the parabolic reflector is that all the waves from the source at the focus that are reflected from the parabola arrive at line A A dash with equal phase since they travel equal distance. Figures E and F shows a cylindrical parabola and a paraboloid respectively. Both converts input waves into a plane wave at the aperture or the mouth of the parabola. The most widely used feed for cylindrical parabola is a linear dipole or a linear array. A paraboloid is formed by rotating a parabola around its axis. A horn antenna is usually used as a feed for paraboloid. Coming to the applications, paraboloidal reflectors are the most widely used large aperture ground based antennas. They are widely used for low noise applications such as in radio astronomy. In the arrangements which we have discussed, the transmitter or receiver is placed at the focal point of the parabola and the configuration is front fed. The disadvantage of the front fed arrangement is that the transmission line from the feed must usually be long enough to reach the transmitting or receiving equipment which is usually placed behind or below the reflector. This may require use of long transmission lines whose losses may not be tolerable in many applications especially in low noise receiving systems. In some applications, the transmitting or receiving equipment is placed at the focal point to avoid need for long transmission lines. But the equipment may be too heavy and bulky and will provide undesirable blockage. 
an arrangement that avoids placing the feed at the focal point is known as Cassegrain feed arrangement. Through optics, a famous astronomer called Cassegrain showed that incident parallel rays can be focused to a point by utilizing two reflectors. To accomplish this, the main or primary reflector must be a parabola, the secondary reflector a hyperbola and the feed placed along the axis of the parabola usually at or near the vertex. The operation can be in transmitting or receiving mode. The figure shows the transmitting mode where the rays that come from the source placed at or near the vertex illuminate the sub reflector and are reflected by it in the direction of a primary reflector as if they originated at the focus of the primary reflector or the parabola. The rays are then reflected by the primary reflector and are converted to parallel rays. The advantage is that with the Cassegrain feed arrangement, the transmitting or receiving equipments can be placed behind the primary reflector. This scheme makes the system relatively more accessible for servicing and adjustments. The application is in satellite ground based systems and have efficiencies of around 65 to 80 percentage. They supersede the performance of the single reflector front fed arrangement by about 10 percentage. Next is about the advantages and disadvantages of Cassegrain feed. The advantages are that first one is compactness, ability to place the feed in a convenient location at or near the vertex of the parabola and hence making it accessible for servicing. Second one, reduction of spillover and minor lobe radiation. And third advantage is that capability for scanning or broadening of beam by moving one of the reflecting surfaces. And the disadvantage of Cassegrain feed is that the presence of sub reflector introduces shadowing or blockage which can significantly degrade the green of the system. Next we shall see how we can avoid shadowing or blockage. We have two mechanisms. First one is partial reflector with offset feed and second one is Cassegrain two reflector system. This slide explains partial reflector with offset feed. Figure shows a normal parabolic reflector which is front fed and a partial reflector with offset feed. As seen in the partial reflector we do not have a full parabola we have a partial reflector and the source or the feed is placed off the axis. The rays from the source fall on the partial reflector and get reflected and are converted to parallel rays. Thus the disadvantage due to feed antenna blockage can be avoided by the use of this offset feed mechanism. Figure shows a Cassegrain two reflector system. As shown we have two partial reflectors. The rays from the feed fall on the first reflector and they are reflected and fall on the second reflector and finally after the second reflection they are converted to parallel rays. Or we can say the input bundle of rays is initially intercepted by the sub reflector and then by the main reflector. Ultimately after two reflections the output is a bundle of rays with prescribed amplitude and phase distributions. Thus the blockage by the sub reflector can be avoided by this mechanism of Cassegrain two reflector system. Figure shows some of the practical reflector antennas. Top left image shows a plane reflector or a flat sheet reflector. Top right image shows a corner reflector. Bottom left one shows a parabolic reflector with front feed. Bottom middle image shows a Cassegrain fed parabolic reflector. The convex secondary reflector is seen above the dish or primary concave parabolic reflector and the feed is visible projecting from the center of the dish. Bottom right one shows an offset or off axis dish antenna where the feed is offset to the side of the reflector in contrast to the common front feed parabolic antenna. Thus we have seen the important topics under reflector antennas that is a plane reflector, corner reflector and parabolic reflector. We have also seen the Cassegrain feed mechanism its advantages and disadvantages and the methods to overcome the shadowing or blockage. These are the references and thank you for your patient listening.